as a speaker, retreat facilitator, medium and mentor. My mission is to awaken and realign you back to your magnificence, your power and infinite potential. As the founder of the Rise With Love philosophy, I'm honored to share wisdom that will create the expansion of joy, abundance, love and freedom to flow into your life. If you're ready, I want to hear you say yes, because the most wonderful things will unfold for you when you embark on the journey to rise with love. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode. I am so excited to introduce you to my special guest today is someone I have admired for years. She is a transformational coach, speaker, and author. She's spoken in front of audiences such as Mind Valley, TEDx, and Hay House Summit. She is the co-founder and CEO of Ignite and Expand, a transformational coaching company for heart-centered entrepreneurs. Her mission is to support heart-centered leaders in creating a life and business that is abundant, soul-fueling, and fulfilling. I honestly can't wait for you to meet this phenomenal and inspirational light worker. A huge welcome, Suzanne Adams. Ah, thank you so much. I'm happy to be here and excited for this conversation. Suzanne, I was trying to recall back as to how I met you. And I think the universe just kept making you pop up on my Facebook page. And I actually bought your book. And I think it's been a few years now. It might have been... I went to Spirit Junkie in 2017, so it might have been from that that then you started kind of popping up. And you have been someone who has brought so much positivity and understanding into my life. It honestly means so much to get this time with you, and I'm honored to co-create something amazing here together with you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And I love conversations like this. And, you know, it's so fun for me to get to connect with different people and be able to also inspire others while we're doing so. Have you ever been to New Zealand? No, I want to go. I've, you know, I've traveled a lot of the world, but I have not made it to New Zealand or Australia yet. Well, you know what? You and I, um, we're manifesting it now. We'll do a speaking <laughs> gig together. And uh, when you come to New Zealand, there you go. (laughs) You heard it first here, folks. That's what we're doing. (laughs) Oh my gosh, Suzanne, I would love for you to share with us how you got started on your spiritual journey. Was there a tipping point in your life that made you go, you know what, I have to embrace my abilities to help humanity? Yeah, yeah, there was. And it, it wasn't, I didn't think of it like that in the beginning. You know, for me, it was more like, like my own wake up call. Like, you know, right now we're in the middle of this very interesting global pandemic and a lot of individuals, I believe, are getting their wake up calls now, right? Or their next level of wake up calls. So for me, it was really more like I was living life. I was pretending to be happy whether I was or not, because that was what was expected of me. And I was this bubbly, happy personality. And that's just who I always appeared to be. And, you know, there were days when that was true. And then there were days when it wasn't true. And I pretended anyway. To make a long story short, I kind of spiraled into this depression. I got to a space where nothing was really working out for me the way that I thought it was supposed to. And I had this just feeling deep in my stomach. I knew something was off. I knew that the life that had once, you know, quote unquote, worked for me wasn't working anymore. And I got to a depression. I was drinking every day, drinking wine every day to kind of numb out a little bit. And I didn't even realize that it was like not normal because so many people were just like, have a glass of wine, take the edge off. And, you know, after a couple months of doing that, I just, I realized that really wasn't me at all. And that it was just like this turning point of, realizing that like I did not I was not born to pay bills and die and I was certainly not born to sit on a couch and start drinking wine at five o'clock every day till I could you know not feel anything and then go to sleep and so in that moment it wasn't like let me tap into my abilities and help humanity (laughs) it was like let me get out of this freaking dark spiral that my life somehow ended up in and how can I feel better how can I feel alive How can I feel joy and happiness and fulfillment and excitement? 
And it just so happens that when, we're, when we come here with a mission, when we come here with a purpose, which by the way, if you're listening to this, you do, we all do in our own level and in our own way, when we can start to align with something bigger and our purpose and our soul and our unique gifts and talents, then that's where we start to feel better. That's where abundance starts to flow in. That's when we're lit up from the inside out. That's when we can create a ripple effect of positivity. So I did at one point have the statement of like, my life will have a positive impact. I'm going to help a humans evolve. I'm going to help shift consciousness. I'm going to help heart-centered leaders to be more abundant, fulfilling, and happy. But it, it took a minute to get there. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. And I think you put it so beautifully. We don't just necessarily wake up and go, you know, from our point of awakening and go, this is what I'm going to do to help humanity. First of all, you want to serve yourself. And then when you, like you say, everyone has a, a purpose. I hear this all the time. People go, I don't know what my purpose is. It's what I help a lot of people to do. And it's like, your purpose will evolve. And that's when you, once you've helped yourself, you'll start helping others, right? Totally. And honestly, just being happy, tuning in happiness and joy is helping others because energy is contagious. And when you bring a high vibrational energy into a room, that is of service, actually. So helping yourself is being of service to others and helping humanity. Because if everyone in the world is happy, well, a lot of things change. And a lot of the low vibe, heavy, toxic, traumatic things go away. I always say, don't underestimate how amazing one person can be or the power of one person. And I think a lot of the Abraham Hicks teaching, isn't it? It's very much that one person can make a huge difference. So who's been some of your like greatest mentors? And is there any gems you can share from them to us? Of course. You know, I believe in the power of having a lot of different mentors. And, you know, these can be mentors that you follow and stalk online and they don't even know you exist. Like myself, for you. (laughs) Right. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but that's the reason behind it all. And I have people like that too, where it's just like, I love to follow their work online, but like, they don't know who I am to the point where then, you know, I also believe in having mentors that you actually have conversations with and that you really can receive their coaching or one of their programs. And so I think it's different for everyone, what feels good to you. And for me, I had all I have, and I still do, you know, have the mentors that I can message and be like, Hey, this is what's up for me. Like I need someone to walk me through this and help me get out of this rut to, you know, I'm going to go watch a a Joe Dispenza video and and get my energy riled up a little bit, you know, or I'm going to see what Tony Robbins had to say about this, or I've been watching Abraham Hicks a lot too, you know? So it just depends. If I think back, you know, on my mentors, obviously Gabby Bernstein was a very early on mentor for me. And I think what I really learned from her was just permission, permission to really, really be who I am. And, you know, another thing that I learned from Gabby and other people was getting in spaces and places with people that are like-minded, which is a reason why I love to host in-person events and, and online virtual events, because there is something about that in-person connection. And when you can't do the in-person because maybe you're on the other side of the world or maybe we're in a global lockdown, <laughs> you can do the virtual connections. And, and that helps too. It's just, it's nice to have community and like-minded people on your same path. Because when we're surrounded with people cheering us on, that get it, that understand, you know, the principles and the the energetics of truly co-creating, it's so much easier and so much more fun than trying to fend off people telling you you're crazy and delusional and be realistic. (laughs) I totally agree. Having a tribe of like-minded people is so important. And we've always been tribal people in the first place anyway, as humanity, and we've kind of moved away from that. I wanted to ask you because, you know, you've spoken on so many platforms in front of thousands of people. What is that like? And have you always envisioned yourself as a speaker? No, I have not always envisioned myself as a speaker. So it's funny, when I was a child, I wanted to be famous. Like I wanted to be an actress and it was just like in my blood. I, you know, I was like that little five-year-old girl always putting on shows and wanting to be like the front and center of attention. And then that slowly dissipated. And when I was in high school, I wanted to go to Hollywood. And, you know, my mom talked me out of like, you're going to college, you're not going to go to Hollywood. And 
anyways, once I kind of got talked out of it, then I was on a different trajectory, right? So fast forward to my awakening and really feeling the call and writing my first book and creating this business, I realized like, okay, like I am being called now to step on stage as an I was terrified. I was scared out of my mind. And I remember like the first talk that I did and I was like, who's even going to come? And, you know, it was so scary. And I think my very first talk, I had like 12 or 14 people there and I was nervous. I was, I was nervous at that point. And, you know, it's one of those things that you go through it. Now I will stand on a stage with thousands in the audience and like love every second of it, you know? And so it just took me busting through that fear and feeling the call and feeling the fear and doing it anyways. And so I love it. I feel my most alive when I'm on stage. I still get nervous. When I did my TEDx, I was very, very nervous. And it wasn't so much about the nerves weren't so much about me standing on the stage with the audience. The nerves were about the caliber of what I knew that talk was going to do. Right. So Right now, I I just looked yesterday and I think it's like almost 750,000 people have watched that talk, which is, I'm so excited because it's a talk about energy and vibrations and how to really utilize within and your mindset, how to train your mindset to create a reality and bring your dream that excites you and bring your dreams into reality. And so I remember being so nervous, so nervous for that particular talk. And it was just last year when I gave it and It was really like the way I look at nerves for that is it's almost like the energy and the frequency coming in. Like you, like it's like your juice coming in. So I kind of reframe it, but there is still a real thing of of being nervous. And so, you know, I don't know why that one specifically I was the most nervous for, but I was, I try to utilize that to expand my energy. Does that make sense? Totally get it. You know, I work as a speaker as well. And, you know, when you do first start, you're like, I don't know if anyone's going to be in the room and and what's going to happen. But I agree with you. The nerves, I think, are an important part. I think it's all to do with the energy. And it's not necessarily about being nervous to speak in front of the crowd. I think it's, you're right, it's the trajectory of what it's actually going to do. And maybe that's what the nerves really are. You talk a lot about, you know, mindset, which I love. I'm all about mindset as well. Why is mindset so important in co-creating the lives that we want? Because we're powerful beings and we have a choice and we can't really choose we can't program our subconscious mind. We can in a way, but you know, our subconscious mind runs the show about 90, the studies keep changing, but 90 to 95% of the time And your conscious mind, when you train your conscious mind and when you can train the way you're looking at things, you invite your subconscious mind to come along for the ride. So when you can really tune in and hone in your, on your mindset, you're inviting that 90% of the program in your body that you're running to go along with what you actually want instead of you know, what beliefs that you've taken on or things that don't serve you. So for example, with this epidemic right now, this pandemic that we're living in, there's a lot of different ways to look at this. Like, is it ideal for anyone? Most people, probably not, you know, especially the mothers that are now at home trying to work and homeschool their children. People that are losing money, not ideal. People that are getting sick and dying, obviously, you know, tragic, not ideal. Everyone making pivots in their business. Some that could be a win for some. And so, you know, really like this is an opportunity to dig deep and say, okay, what's the goodness coming out of this? How can I shift my mindset on this? Maybe my heart and body and soul needed a break, needed a rest, needed a minute to reset and recalibrate without running around with a never ending to do list, right? Maybe you have children. Maybe my children really needed some connection time and and needed to bond with me in a new way. Maybe there's a new idea that my soul has been calling forth that I would have never, ever heard if all this crazy stuff hadn't happened, right? Maybe this is a time for all the light workers that have really been preparing for this for the last decade to step up, to be a beacon and to shine in a brighter, bolder way, right? So from that energy, you start to create opportunity. You start to create innovation and you have a choice. You can be in the victim mentality and the victim mindset of bitching and complaining and moaning, or you can step in and say, how can I make the best of this? What can I do to be of service? What is this really about? And how can I do my part? Does that make sense? Totally. Oh my gosh. I feel that so strongly in my um, sacral chakra. 
my abdomen is like, oh, create. I love it. You know, it's so important to understand that our minds are truly powerful more than we give it credit for. Like you say, I know the statistics, you know, change all the time, but let's say, you know, we're conscious of five to 10% of our thoughts. All that 90, 95% is, you know, still going to have a major effect on us. And I love that you say, you know, we've got a choice. We've always got a choice. Always. Yeah. Choose, are you going to be a victim or are you going to be someone that is going to uprise? And so what do you think is the biggest block that people are having? And why do you think we have this block? Right now or just in general? Maybe in general. I see the most of people trying to achieve what they believe they can have instead of what they truly desire. You know, I love to say, keep your reality away from my fantasy. Because, <laughs> you know, I've created from having a fantasy. Right now, I'm looking at the most beautiful view of the ocean and a place that I really never thought I would be living. And it, it all happened because I tuned in. I, I followed the inspiration. I kept saying, yes, I kept showing up. But if I would have been realistic, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have started my career. I wouldn't have been on the TEDx stage. I wouldn't have been hosting sold out events and retreats. I wouldn't have hit certain abundant milestones, right? And so it's really about not like so many people when I sit down and I say, tell me what you want to create. And they give me a few things. And then I say, okay, now really, what do you want? Like, you know, if you could do anything, what would you be doing? And then they jump up like 10 levels. And I'm like, why didn't you start there? Well, because this feels realistic, you know, or maybe even if it feels realistic, but it's a stretch. And so I think people aren't dreaming big enough because they're dumbing themselves down to what they believe is realistic. I love it. I'm like, wow, what a powerful statement. Keep your reality out of my fantasy. Can we make that into a t-shirt? Have you thought of that already? That's a great idea. Maybe I'll do that. I've got, yeah, a time. There you go. You've got lots of free time, <laughs> right? So make that into a t-shirt and you're right. People, it's like, we're so afraid to really say what we want. And it's like, I'll just, I'll just tell you this version, the superficial version, because that's my paradigm right now. But it's like, oh, if I tell you the real thing of what I want, then, then what? You know, it's like, it's crazy in a sense when we say it out loud. Yeah, totally. And people are scared. I mean, it all boils down to feeling worthy. A lot of times people don't really feel worthy of what they really, really want. So again, it goes back to inner work and, and the mindset piece and, and digging down through the wounds, right? Which is the, the work that a lot of people don't want to do. But when you do that, you break through. That's where the magic happens. Totally, totally. You talk as well about connecting with yourself and your intuition. And that's something that you see really important that we do through meditation as one practice. How can we go, you know, about that and bust through the limitations that hold us back from giving ourselves that time? Yeah. So again, it's it's a mindset and a priority. I believe meditation is one of the most, if not the, one of the most powerful tools for any human being to grow, expand, and receive. And the reason is we start to get out of our minds and into our hearts. And when we live in our hearts, we really can create so much more and have so much power. And so I actually, in a few weeks, I'm going to be celebrating my six year meditation anniversary, which means I have not missed one day of meditating in almost six years. And for me, it's a non-negotiable. Like I started kind of dabbling with meditation first. And then once I realized like the difference of how much better I felt, how much clearer, how much connection, how much I could receive guidance intuitively, so much better with that connection everything just shifted for me. And so, you know, some days it's 10 minutes, some days it's an hour and a half. I meditate. It depends. Ideally 20 minutes a day is about the average. I have a whole bunch of free guided meditations on my site. I would invite anyone to check them out. I mean, some of them are seven minutes, some of them are 12 minutes, but that's how I got started is just sitting and listening. And then you just feel your heart open up and you start to get ideas and you start to feel peaceful and you start to feel grounded and all of that leads to more joy and fulfillment and happiness, right? So I think it's so important to understand that we're not really in the driver's seat. Our heart, our soul is in the driver's seat. The more we can lean back and receive that, the more fulfilled that we're going to be. You know, again, right now is a great example. We can't control what's happening. There's really nothing we can do other than 
pray, connect, and show up where we feel called and offer inspiration, offer positivity, and also just feel the emotions coming up for us. I've never felt this before, but with you, I really feel the energy shifts happening in my body. It's so interesting. I'm just like, wow, when you talked about connecting with your heart, because I, I believe meditation is the key as well. I think that's a lot of light workers, you know, we've kind of caught on to that. But I really feel that even when you talk, the vibration and the energy is so filled with love that you can actually feel this. I mean, we're on two different sides of the world and I can still feel the energy right into my heart from what you say. It's amazing. Ah, oh, that makes me so happy. So that's kind of like a secret skill of mine is like I'm able to move energy through words. <laughs> <laughs> through words and through focus and most people feel it but they don't know what's happening right like for example I was giving a keynote at the American Heart Association and it was with a bunch of older women like in the south like country club women and you know they're maybe not quite as open to some of the spiritual conversations and I did a really powerful meditation with them and it was short it was like five minutes but again like especially when I'm on a stage or even like this in a conversation or it's like a unique gift I am able to and I do it without even realizing I'm doing it. It's just like I'm able to just help people move energy, like release energy that's not serving them and expand their heart energy and expand their power energy. And so I had this line of all these women after my talk at the American Heart Association coming up to me being like, that meditation was fabulous and I didn't even know I could meditate and oh my god I loved it it wasn't the meditation per se even though it was but they were feeling that energy they were feeling their heart open and come alive and you know we all could do that to a certain level for sure it's amazing I mean I actually feel the energy Whew. <laughs> It's a beautiful feeling. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I was in a real funk yesterday. And I was like, I don't know what's going on. And I just feel you've lifted whatever heaviness was in me. So, you know, thank you for that, Suzanne. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> now, you work with a lot of leaders who want to do good for humanity, which is amazing. You know, your vibe attracts your tribe. So I know you guide them to take aligned action. Can you explain to us what is aligned action and how do you bring out their potential? Yeah, so it's different for everyone, right? Like I don't believe there's one right path for any person. We all have options. Just like when you get in your car to go somewhere and there's three different routes to get there. That's always the case. If you want to go somewhere, one, you got to get in your car. Two, you've got to figure out which path you're going to take. Three, you put your foot on the gas or you get on the bus or you get on the airplane or however you're going to get there, you get there, right? So it's just the same way in creating a business or creating healing or, you know, creating something that lights you up. It's the same process. You got to look at, okay, where do I want to go? What are the options to get there? And what is my responsibility and my part to get there? Like, you know, meditation is a piece of that. But if we're all just sitting on our meditation, visualizing all day, which there is power in that, the point of meditation is to receive the guidance, to, to heal, to let go, to connect. But then you get the idea. You get the idea of like, hmm, I'm going to get a post this online or I'm going to go to Starbucks. And then at Starbucks, you end up meeting this client or you end up meeting this person that introduces you to this person that was going to promote you or hire you or whatever it is. Like, it really doesn't matter the industry, quite honestly. It matters that you're showing up. And so, for example, I was hosting an event and I had, uh, it was, this was for one of my high level programs and I had a client there and she was like feeling really stuck. And she was stressed. She was like, honestly, like, I don't even know if I can continue to pay for this program, Suzanne. I'm feeling stressed and, you know, yada, yada, yada. She's a breadwinner for her family. And so we sat down in about 15 minutes. I looked at where she wanted to go and had an idea for her, charted this whole plan out. And next she was all of a sudden, she was like, yes, this is it. She was in action. She felt it. She could see it. And then she went and she implemented right away. The next month she created $40,000 in her business, brand new, because she followed the action. And that was the aligned action. This could have gone two ways. I could have given her the strategy and she could have said, that's not going to work. Or how am I going to do that? Or she could have not really acted on it right? But she did the part she needed to do. And she was even at that meeting, she ran out and she got on Facebook and she just started announcing. And then I, I gave her some ideas like, all right, this person would be a great lead for that. You know, think of these people, how you've connected with them. She was messaging right away and then boom, 
you know, and this has gone on to create her a lot more revenue and impact a lot more people, but that was just $40,000 in the next 30 days from that event. Wow. I love that. And I'm going to share something because I think this might also be a good way for people to understand. So I meditate every day as well. And I was meditating and I keep getting message Suzanne, message Suzanne. I was like, I can't message her. She has no idea who I am. And I keep getting, (laughs) you need to message her. And I was like, oh, I keep getting it. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to put the action to this. And I literally, I plucked up the courage, which for me, I was like, she is never going to read my message. And I was, I just sent you a message on Facebook. And I was like, oh my gosh, she actually replied. And I keep (laughs) getting that. I was like, yes, thank you universe for, for helping me to really listen because I felt they wanted, you know, for us to connect in some way, who knows where it's going to lead. Well, you're going to come to New Zealand and we're going to do shows together. So that's where it's going to lead. But (laughs) You know, I just want to show people how powerful meditation is. And you're not just getting this stuff because you're making it up. It's coming for a reason. And the important part, like you said, we can all sit and meditate and that's great, but we need to give the momentum and that's what the action is. Totally. So I love that. And kudos to you for following your guidance, you know. It took a few weeks, but you know. (laughs) I listened. <laughs> the timing was perfect. So yeah, <laughs> it was. Now your events, your workshops, your retreats look absolutely amazing. And you know, I keep envisioning myself there. So I'm going to have to get, you know, my ass to one of these. Yeah. What's your favorite part of working with the collective group of people? Gosh, there's so much. I think I love witnessing the breakthroughs you know, because so many people resist investing, you know, so many people resist investing in the right coach or the right program or the right retreat or whatever it is. And so when I have, I don't work with someone unless they're like committed and excited because I can't make someone committed and excited. I can guide anyone that's ready to show up and ready to put in the work and do the work. But if people are like, I can help people bust through resistance, but actually at these, some of these events, there's always someone that gets dragged there by a friend and they don't really know what they're coming to. (laughs) And those people, they, their, their resistance is gone by the end of it, you know? So I guess I, I shouldn't say that, but my favorite part is the breakthroughs, watching them just drop the old stories, let go of the fear and really embody their truth and their power. I love watching them get clear, having a clear action plan. And then people all come together like that with the, with the intention of releasing and expanding and looking for a better way and demanding the success that they know is meant for them it's powerful what happens and you know I love watching the connections that have been made there's so many I mean we've had people come to our events that are workshops or retreats or whatever that um that had been bridesmaids in each other's weddings that they met you know or business partners or future clients and so I love just building the community because like I was saying earlier that was such a big part for me was so healing and and helpful was connecting with like-minded people and so I love being a facilitator of that It's amazing. I know what you mean because I facilitate retreats as well and so many people want to come and do this but there is a story. There's, you know, some limiting belief that they put on, like I don't have the money or I can't take the time off or whatever it is. And I love that you say, I can only help you, you know, if you show up, if you're ready to commit. And, you know, that's something that I love about you. And I've, I've seen videos of your events and I'm like, oh, that just is like the crowd that I want to be with. So I'm always like, I'm there too somewhere. And I love that you just help people really tune into themselves. Mm -hmm. That is such a beautiful gift to help humanity. And I think, you know, that collective energy as well in events amplifies everything. Yes, totally. It really does. And it's just, you know, I said to someone the other day and I said, it's fun for me to be on any stage, but it's really fun for me to be on a stage with, you know, a few hundred people that have come specifically to see me. And I know that that sounds ridiculous, but it's something in the energy and the excitement of there, you know, it's it's the same, like when I've spoken for Mind Valley or, or TEDx, like the energy always ends up shifting, but there is something so special about my own events that that I, I don't know, I can't even put words to it. It's just so, so powerful and so transformative and just such a blessing and a gift. 
I get that as well because it's your energy you're putting you know your your heart and soul whereas when you're going on an event where you've been invited you haven't really you know created the energy for it you're just kind of like there so but that's fine too it is, they're they're all fine it's just there is a little bit of a difference you know I, I do get it I, I get that now I want to ask you something a little bit different okay if you could have a conversation with anyone in history whether they have been a physical manifestation or not, who do you think that would be and why? You know, this is such an interesting question because there's so many people I would love to just sit down and have a conversation with. I think we can learn from so many people. (laughs) I think what comes to me is Jesus. And I know that that sounds interesting, but like think of Jesus, like the legacy that Jesus has left and all the stories and you know this man was just this enlightened being among people that maybe weren't so enlightened and I think it would just be when I tune into the energy of Jesus I just feel like so comforted and so held and inspired and I think it would be so amazing to be able to like sit down at the dinner table with Jesus and have a really amazing conversation (laughs) have a last supper right yeah, totally. <laughs> Is there anything in particular you think, oh, I'd really like to ask him that question or, you know, is there anything that comes to mind? I would just want to be in his energy and ask him what like advice and message he would have for me. That's what I would want to ask. It's just beautiful. I think that would be such an important person of history to talk to as well to understand, is he really the version that we've been what's the word, um, molded to, to know, or is he actually, you know, different from that? I think that's what I would want to know. Well, what I think is, cause I see this among spiritual teachers. I was having this conversation with a, a friend of mine who's, who's pretty well established and knows a lot of industry leaders. And cause here's the thing, we're, we're human beings right? And Jesus was a human being. And we're all going to have moments. We're all going to have egoic moments. And, you know, to anyone listening, you can be a spiritual teacher and on a spiritual path and you don't have to be perfect. So it's like, I get kind of annoyed when people think that like, because you're a spiritual teacher, that you're not allowed to make mistakes or that you're supposed to be this like God-like being, because it, that's not what we came here to do. We came here to, to muck it up and learn with the rest of them, you know, with the rest of us, right? And so, So I don't know. I think sometimes people are extra hard on spiritual teachers because of the nature of what we do. And I kind of think that's bullshit. Like, it's like, yes, talk the talk, walk the walk. If you're not walking, talking the talk and walking the walk, okay, I have a problem with that. But you don't have to be on 100%. And if you're up on stage of serving thousands and you don't want to go hug every single person and have in-depth with every single person, you don't have to, right? Like we each do us and that's going to look different for each of us and everyone's going to look different. But, you know, I don't really like it when people are judging people because of their choices. And I think that that can happen. So Jesus probably was what he thought, but he also probably made his own mistakes and had his own human moments would be my guess. Yeah, (laughs) I I would probably agree with that. You know, I get this all the time because I work as an intuitive. How did you not see this coming? Or how could you not know that? It's like, well, you know what? I'm still here to have human experiences too. (laughs) And as much as I would love to think that I'm like God or something like that, it doesn't work that way. And, um, you know, I don't want to know it all. I still want to go through hardships and lessons because that's where I grow. I don't grow when it's all perfect. I grow when I stuff up and when, you know, that's when I learn about myself. So, yeah, I do agree with you. There is this idea that, you know, light workers and spiritual teachers and leaders have to be perfect. Well, people are scared to step up on a stage or step up because they think I'm not perfect you know, and really what I want to convey too is to the audience is like, you are, you know, if you feel the call to go bigger with your mission and your message, then you, you're ready, right? And you don't need to be perfect. And, you know, we teach what it is that we're here to learn. And if you're still learning, you are still learning because we're always still learning until the very last breath. We're learning and growing until we're no longer on this lane. And so don't let that keep anyone from, from not saying yes and stepping up. I love it. My next question was going to actually be, what advice would you give someone who's just beginning on their enlightenment journey or self-discovery, but you've kind of said it. So what's some other advice? Yeah, I would add to that. Totally. 
First of all, know that like you are living in a time of awakening, right? I've been saying since 2013, we're in, we're going through a worldwide spiritual awakening. Everyone's on their own path. Everyone will have their own time. So whether you are, you know, have been at this for a while or just opening up, trust yourself. Find the teachers, find the books, find the podcast, find what you need to get the support that you need. When I first was awakening, I didn't know anyone in the spiritual industry, business. Like it was like a whole new thing and I felt so alone. And no way could I have gotten to where I am today without connecting to different healers and coaches and friends and community and reading the book that I've read and, you know, all of it. So there are the tools that you need. Trust your gut, trust your gut, trust your gut, get rid of the fear and really step forward. Thank you. That is beautiful. Oh, yes. Suzanne, I just love you. I'm just going to put it out there. You're so sweet. Thank I, you. So I'm just like an awe of everything that you do and the difference you make for humanity. The ripples are global. So know that. Thank you. That means so much to me. Thank you. <laughs> Now, you mentioned people can go to your website and start by listening to some of your meditations and things like that. I'm sure there'll be a lot of people who want to connect with you because why would you not want to connect with Suzanne? She's phenomenal. So where can people find you? And I yeah. will link it anyway. Yeah, link it. And then I, I have a specific link for the free meditations. It's SuzanneAdamsInc.com slash meditations. And there's, I think, five free meditations. So pick one, play with it for a little while, listen to it for 30 days, then grab another one and listen to it for 30 days. And um, in that, I think anyone will find more transformation, more guidance, more purpose, more connection. I'm on Instagram. I play with Instagram stories all the time at Suzanne Adams Inc. And then my Facebook page is Suzanne Adams of the business page i don't actually think i follow you on instagram that's a crime that is a crime you better change that today <laughs> i'm like i follow you hard out on facebook and all that kind of stuff but i'm like i don't actually think i follow you on instagram so i'm gonna make sure i hit that like button i don't know how that happened but suzanne i'm just so grateful i have like i said to you this there's something that you've shifted something inside of me i can't even put it into words it's just been phenomenal and if I felt it, I know all of you guys felt it as well. You've shared so much wisdom and you're beautiful inside and out. You truly are the perfect example of how we rise with love. And so I'm so honored that you spent this time with us. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you for having me. And it was truly a pleasure. And yeah, I'll have to come to New Zealand before too long. <laughs> yeah, we'll, make it happen. we'll make it happen oh everybody as you rise with love you'll start to see your actions coming from the heart just like suzanne talked about really going to that heart-centered space and keep shining your light so that you can also help others to find that goodness make time to connect with yourself through meditation just like suzanne said commit to 30 days choose one of her you know five free meditations and see how your mindset changes to be more positive we are so proud of you, aren't we, Suzanne? We're proud of them for showing up. Yes, definitely, definitely. So thank you so much for joining Suzanne and myself. Until next time, everybody, peace, love, and blessings. Melissa.